Hi, I'm Michael Ryan from the Andrews Sports Medicine and Orthopedic Center in Birmingham, Alabama, here to present a case using the knotless fiber tack in the setting of a label reconstruction of the hip and a concomitant PAO. This is a patient female, former dancer, who has bilateral borderline dysplasia and has had years of hip pain. She's previously undergone two arthroscopies on both her right and left hips, including a ligamentum teres debridement and plication, followed by a ligamentum teres reconstruction and plication and labral debridement. Despite this, she continued to have groin pain bilaterally, as well as subjective feelings of instability. On examination, her range of motion was listed on the right side, which demonstrates a decrease in range of motion on her most symptomatic side, which was her right, limited flexion, internal, external rotation, both in flexion and extension, all of which created pain. Her left side was a little bit better, but still relatively limited comparatively. Her examination also demonstrated positive impingement signs, including a positive fader and faber testing, with also positive apprehension testing as well. In addition, her Baton score demonstrated an elevated score of nine of nine, indicating global hyperlaxity. These are her uh, initial x-rays on the left side. Uh, you can demonstrate relatively normal appearing acetabulum, questionable borderline dysplasia. And on the uh, right side, uh, the done view does demonstrate her post-surgical changes after the ligament of teres reconstructions, but also demonstrates no obvious or major cam deformity. Her measurements as listed above indicate a bilateral uh, borderline dysplasia with a center edge angle between 20 and 25 degrees, a relatively normal tonus angle, and a relatively uh, decreased anterior center edge angle and no obvious cam deformity. These are her initial sort of MRI and arthroscopic photos, uh, which demonstrate small diminutive labrum and a tearing of the ligamentum teres. Following her label reconstruction, uh, this is the uh, reconstruction afterwards demonstrating go to position and tension of the prior graft. Despite this, she had continued pain. Upon further evaluation and examination, uh, we see repeat MRI, which again demonstrates a questionable re-tear of the ligament of teres, uh, more so on the right, which demonstrates a complete tear, and on the left demonstrates a partial re-tear as well. Again, her radiographic parameters when assessed overall are relatively normal, do not demonstrate any obvious uh, or global dysplasia, but really generally uh, demonstrate borderline dysplasia and uh, questionable uh, instability. On further examination, there are some more concerning factors, again, in indicating overall global shallow hip socket with an increased extrusion index and increased increased femoral anaversion, all of which can contribute to a greater hypermobility and instability of the hip joint. A further assessment it does in indicate that many other factors portend a poor outcome with repeat arthroscopy alone, given the fact that uh, the bony instability is uh, likely insufficient at this point. Following this, the next steps that were decided and discussed with the patient that isolated arthroscopic reconstruction would likely require augmentation of the bony stability in addition to that as well. So the discussion was had, and given the fact that our right side was most symptomatic, we decided to proceed with a revision, right hip with Rossby, with labral reconstruction, and PAO. In this setting, I think that it's highly valuable to have an anchor that is not only reproducible in terms of the attention to recreate the reconstruction, uh, but also one that is not going to cause any sort of potential perforation or irritation, uh, especially in a shallow uh, hip socket. We have known from prior studies that the very anterior aspect of the hip, from approximately the one o'clock down to the three o'clock in the psoas U, that bone is very thin and, and doesn't leave a lot of room for inserting an anchor. And so having an anchor with which is low profile, which is knotless, which reduces knot stack and additional tissue in the way, in addition to having a relatively small area of bone removal is, is very important in this area. Beyond this, the uh, use of a curved guide is very beneficial to allow you to access the hip in different positions, and then also ease of use is, is very helpful to uh, insert these anchors. There is a demonstration showing the bottom left, this uh, anchor here using the pole suture, uh, and the new updated core suture, which is much improved for the initial uh, versions. It's a little bit more robust and uh, converts much more reliably and strongly. And so the pros of this is that there, one, there are no knots. Again, this is, reduces the amount of suture material in the hip joint. It maintains tension, and so you're not reliant upon a, a knot that is tied that then becomes a little bit loose as you increase or move down clock face. It also uh, is tensionable, so you can go back and tension the anchor as you've already inserted them. Uh, in addition, it's a smaller anchor. It's all suture, so there's no potential irritation from either a peak and no concern for cysts due to a biocomposite material, and it's also very efficient. This is a simple example of how uh, it's a very tensionable anchor, and so we've inserted all of our anchors and passed our graft and secured it anteriorly, and as we pass the sutures, we're able to go back and tension the prior anchor before. So as we pass it around here, you can see that we've tensioned and cinched this down, securing the uh, labral graft to the edge. 
the prior uh, one is kept intact so that we can go back and tension it again. As you can see uh, right here, we'll pull it up on the rim again. And then we can go back to our most recent anchor that we inserted and cinched and converted to tension that as well, which helps us really position this graft right along the rim, position it so that it's uh, really secured well. And this is the result afterwards, which demonstrates a very well-positioned, uh, well-fixed graft throughout the uh, entirety of the uh, cir circumference of the acetabulum. When it comes to anchor insertion, there's been numerous studies that have really demonstrated that this area, especially in the anterior aspect near the psoas U, can be very tenuous in terms of positioning of your anchors. Dr. Philippon and his group uh, demonstrated that there is a rim angle, the smallest of which is at the three o'clock position. And this basically is dictated by the position of the anchor insertion point, as well as any sort of acetabular plastic that's been formed, as well as the uh, anchor insertion depth. And so that we know that to having an anchor that allows us to have a low profile, have a curved guide for different positioning angles, as well as the uh, depth is, is very important. We also know that uh, the depth is an important aspect. Uh, these two pictures here uh, showed a cadaver study, but also in one of my patients uh, during a PAO, that even in a correctly positioned anchor that is not penetrating or perforating the joint can perforate the medial wall. In these cases where you have very low volume acetabulum, I think it is very important to have an anchor that is going to reduce any sort of irritation. And, and a peak anchor, while very good in a lot of other positions, may be uh, less ideal in this situation. Therefore, having an all suture anchor, even if there is a little bit of penetration in the medial wall, may have less irritation of the uh, iliacus on this side. In addition, we can see here the uh, post-operative uh, films from this initial patient in the case presentation. There's her label reconstruction on the uh, left side, again, with all of the uh, knotless fiber tack anchors. You can see there that this is the uh, old version and the, the new version demonstrates some updated core suture, which again, converts much more easily and is a little bit more robust, uh, so much easier to work with. And then uh, on the right side, you can see the correction of her acetabulum and the PAOs. And these are her new metrics looking at the overall coverage of the acetabulum, demonstrating a lateral center edge angle of 30 degrees, tonus angle of one, and a much improved uh, extrusion index as well at about 13% bilaterally. Uh, again, the patient initially started her evaluation on the right side. She did well on, the, uh, on that side and eventually underwent surgery on the left. I think it's important to consider this. And again, we're still learning a lot about the hip instability and micro instability sort of paradigm. But I think what's interesting is that, uh, you know, PAOs do have a lower uh, outcome scores after undergoing arthroscopy first. So it's important to help identify which patients may benefit from this. Fortunately, this patient can see her uh, outcome scores there in the bottom, looking at her IHOT modified hair hip score and non arthritic hip score are all in the 80s and 90s, which is a little bit above what was expected based on these other prior studies. So very happy with uh, how this patient uh, ended up progressing through her experience and revision surgery, combination of having uh, some great uh, suture anchors to uh, really dial in a label reconstruction circumferentially, plus a PIO is very helpful. Thank you.